Well, today on Nation, we're gonna talk about how to get those franchise locations in route cleaning. I'm talking McDonald's, Taco Bell, and every other trademark name you could possibly think about. So stay tuned, come hang out with us. It's WCR Nation. What's going on, everybody? Jersey here from WCR Nation and windowcleaner.com. You're here. What's up? It is because of you that I do this show every week, and I was reaffirmed that with the convention. We'll get to that in a second, but if you are new here, have a look around. Check it out. We have a ton of different episodes going back uh, quite a few times. We're talking two years of these episodes. Hopefully, you get something from it. Hopefully, it helps your business get a little bit farther. Uh, hopefully it answers some questions for you. Just go back. Binge all you want. It's available anywhere iTunes. I'm sorry. Anywhere podcasts are available. iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, all of those places. Podbean and Soundcast. All the places you could possibly think of. Search it. You'll find it. The name's WCR Nation. And uh, yeah, binge away, my friends. If you are somebody who watches every single week, if you are a loyal fan, if you download the podcast and you can't wait to listen to it, or at least if you listen to it every now and then, thank you guys very, very much. Uh, If you are all of that and you buy your supplies through me, well, thank you. It is because of you that I got to buy Joe's Crab Shack at the convention this year. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Uh, Guys, truly, 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 you blow me away every week with orders. Um, If you have everything in your cart or you're shopping, throw it in your cart, shoot me a text, let me know, say, yo, Jersey, what's up? Everything is in my cart. At the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a code that you can use to save 5% off and get free shipping, so stay tuned to that. My number direct, my cell phone number, save this right now, piece of paper. Write it down on your phone. I don't care. It's 862-312-2026. That is my cell phone. So text away. Uh, Keep it up, guys. Your orders are awesome. It's like a virtual high five. Also, everybody that was at the show, the huge convention just got done um, this past week here. If you haven't gone to a convention, go. 2020 is in Atlanta. Super easy to go to. Hotel is amazing. We've been there before it's absolutely phenomenal just talking and just meeting with all these people it is so awesome when you guys just like come up and say what's going on i talked to probably a hundred people at least at least that just were like yo i just wanted to be like thanks you know i listen to your podcast that's just super super awesome make it vocal guys uh it really really is it makes uh, all of this worthwhile so i'm not gonna go on that and i can't say thank you to everybody uh obviously But thank you guys, everybody who met me. Uh, You know who you are. Uh, You're awesome. Uh, But this week, I do have a few uh, shout-outs. I want to say what's up to Brad Hyatt, Scott Clean Windows, uh, DB Windows 242, and Neko Wink. Those are some of the guys that caught the issue last week. Um, The uh, YouTube video, for some reason, the up... It's a whole thing. It was a whole thing. It's not going to be loaded now until... Later this week, uh, almost at the same time that the other video will come out. So if you're not finding last week's episode on YouTube, search it out on podcast. Uh, It should be up on uh, uh, video now, YouTube, when you're finding it. It's called Be Seen. Uh, That's with Justin Monk. Thank you to Justin Monk, by the way. Super awesome dude. But uh, thanks, guys, for catching that up. The issue is uh, it's been fun trying to fix that. Uh, Steven uh, Tapia, what's going on, man? It's your idea this week that we are going to be using, and we are talking about franchise locations. We're talking about McDonald's and Wendy's and Taco Bell's and Walgreens and all of those locations that you want to add in your route, but you haven't. You haven't added them in. Uh, You haven't had a chance to get to them. They're different than my mom and pa. You just don't know how to sell them. Every time you walk into the location, they say, oh, yeah, we have a company. Or, um, yeah, corporate handles that. Right? That happens way more than you think. Way more. Any multi-location place, for the most part, is going to be a property manager or facility maintenance person or the dreaded corporate word. That's what people throw all the time. Oh, sorry, we don't do that. You'll have to talk to corporate. Awesome. 
<laughs> I know who I got to talk to. And that's the thing with them. When you're going out there and doing these route, the benefit to a big box type franchisee type place is you're more than likely going to get a few of them because there's district managers. The district manager usually handles them, but it is pretty tight on price. That's the downside, but you're going to get multiple locations. And even if you're competitive and it fills in one of your routes, you may actually get uh, a few other locations you weren't planning on. It's going to open up your route. So that is definitely huge. Um, I have done, oh, I couldn't even tell you how many different uh, franchise style locations, and they all kind of have the same theme. Um, one of the big ones that uh, everybody talks about is Walgreens. Uh, Walgreens is like they were using an NSP. Uh, NSP stands for National Service Provider. Um, that's not what the episode necessarily is about, but that's Nest and uh, there's a bunch of other ones, uh, All American Maintenance and things. Where those are national companies who say Walmart's or uh, Walgreens will call and say, "Hey, we have 2,817 locations across the country. Make sure they're clean." They're the ones that kind of do everything, right? But we're talking about like a Walgreens where they brought it back in house. They don't pay very much. They all do it themselves. District locations kind of have it. Uh, I've bid 101 Walgreens at one time. Uh, those kind of bids are cool in your brain until you realize how much work the bid alone takes you. All for you to be in the gamble with everybody else. So it is a little bit tougher to sell and get to these kind of properties. There's more gatekeepers, if you will. But uh, there really are super beneficial in the end because you're getting multiple locations. You're filling up route. There's a ton of them. There's probably more uh, franchise locations around than uh, local mom and pas that are around. If you sell one mom and pa for 10 bucks, that's awesome. That's how you build routes, right? But you sold one $10 job. That's a lot of sales to go and sell and sell and sell and sell. What if you got five or 10 locations? Yes, you're doing more work for that to get to it, but you're getting five or 10 locations and it actually works out to being less uh, work for five locations than it would be to sell five ma and pa locations. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. I would love if you are on YouTube to comment down below, let me know what your favorite company is to deal with nationally. Make sure to give us a thumbs up on the video too if you're on uh, YouTube. If you're listening, go to YouTube. That's where our conversation happens. Uh, just comment. Tell me where you are. There's that, uh, oh my goodness, I, fen uh, I forget his name. Ryan Fenster. Ryan, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. All he does is he comments every week with a thumbs up. You guys don't know. That little stuff helps the, the videos actually track. So thanks. But comment. That's where we conversate. But anyway, um, I have to say, to answer that question for you guys myself, is I have to say that Arby's has been my favorite one to deal with because uh, the managers there uh, have a lot of control and they can throw it around to whoever they need to. They can do the bids. It's just really a nice, easy sell. And uh, we do a lot of locations for them too. We actually uh, do quite a few locations. But anyway, that's who I like. Um, first and foremost, the big thing when you walk into a mom pa or a na mom pa, the difference is, is when you go into a simple one store tchotchke ceramic cat stores, you walk in and you talk right to the owner. You talk to, hey, is an owner or manager around? And they go, oh, I'm the owner. I've owned this for 30 cents. Well, cool. Great. Nice to meet you. My name's Jersey. I would love to give you this. Now, remember, we talked about it before, but I always have everything written down, and I hand it to the person. I hand it to them, the bid, the papers, my business card, everything is down, and I give it to them. Now, um, with that being said, when I go into a franchise location, I say the same thing, and I know the owner or manager is not going to be there, but usually they'll throw something around. They might throw a manager who, of course, won't have any time for you, but you say, hey, is an owner or manager around? And the kid behind the counter goes, <sighs> Yeah, let me get them. And they go back and disappear. And then somebody who is very important, very important, comes out usually with a, a, a carabiner of keys on their hip, right? They come out and they're not looking at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, what can I help you with? 
because they're used to getting only the bad stuff. Say, hey, I'm Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. I just wanted to drop this bid off for you for a location. Uh, for your window cleaning, I know you guys got somebody, but I don't know if you're looking. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to take it. And they're always too busy for you, which is cool, but get their card. Hey, do you guys, by the way, do you have a card? I'd love to uh, connect with you again in a week or a couple weeks or whatever. I always say a couple weeks. It sounds less uh, intru intrusive, and uh, people are usually okay with it. Now, they're too busy to let you uh, give you any time. So getting that card kind of goes to the next one. Now, sometimes I've had people, when I go in, I don't know that I've ever actually closed but one job when I went in, the guy said, uh, he stopped his busy routine and he went, that's so crazy. I said, what, what's so crazy? He goes, we were literally talking about that five, 10 minutes ago, how we had to find a new window cleaner. I said, well, well, I guess fate brought us together. And he went, ha ha ha, and I went, ha ha ha. And he signed the paper and I closed it. But most of the time they go, okay, well, uh, let me look over this and uh, we'll let you know. Or uh, we got somebody or corporate handles it, whatever. Hey, absolutely. Let me get your name and number. I'll catch up with you in a couple weeks and see where you're at. Right? Super low-key, non-intrusive. They're going to give you their information. And if not, you can get it other ways. You know their name. They're wearing a name tag. If they're not, say, oh, what was your name, by the way? If you, you know, oh, hey, I don't have business cards, which is a lie. Those people are so important. Of course they have business cards. <laughs> can you see or uh, hear my... Um, uh, my uh, my sassiness there, uh, but um, you can get their name or whatever. When you call back, you say, "Hey, I'm just looking for Dave. Uh, I talked to him a couple weeks ago." And whenever there's a call for that person, they usually patch them through. But first and foremost, you're getting that manager's information. Now, if you go up to the front desk and um, you know the kid behind the counter goes, "No, they're not here right now." I say, oh, are they at another location or is it an outside office? Because sometimes they'll be like, oh, they're always at the, the Wendy's over there on 13th place. Okay, great. Well, I'll go check them out. What was their name? I'm going to ask her. Oh, it's Dave. Okay, thanks a lot. I'm not going to leave anything there because I'm going to go try to track Dave down on the other location. Because then when I go there, I say, hey, Dave, is Jersey with XYZ? Uh, we were at your other location. They'd say you'd be over here, and uh, we're looking to bid all your locations anyway, so I just wanted to give you the information. It sets you apart. You did the effort. You're not a bucket bob that's just walking around trying to get stuff, right? So that part will help sell jobs when you can just kind of put that out there that you're more than just a bucket bob. Because these people are used to dealing with Guys that are doing this for beer money, because those are the ones that always, always sell. Again, we've talked about it in sales before, but if you could be a company that's a legit company that's selling, it really does put you, uh, sets you apart. So getting all that information, remember to write it all down. And again, we're touching on a lot of this stuff that we've done route sales. Go back, listen, we've done a couple episodes on it. Uh, the version that we have is a half sheet of paper, and on there it has all the spots for the questions. But I'm going to get their name and I'm going to get their number because I know I'm going to be following up. I'm also going to ask which other locations they have. Hey, uh, are you just a store manager or are you district manager? Ah, uh, you, know, you got to talk to the district manager. Or they say they're the district manager. Now, for the most part, again, I may be wrong. Uh, in every area is a little bit different. It is. But for the most part, the district manager, you're moving up the chain, right? The district manager is going to have more than one location. Usually, it's not the manager. The manager may just be, you know, a guy who was the, uh, you know, uh, sir or the um, uh, server, not server, but you know, person, the person that checks you out there. Golly, anyway, whatever. And uh, or the fry cook, and they just got promoted, and now they're the manager of the store. Super busy again. Very very important people. Um, but uh, you're looking for the district manager usually because a district manager, uh, and there is one, he's going to be overseeing four or five locations, maybe more, depending on how big the district is. But they have a lot of stuff on their plate. One of the big things to do is to let them know that you're taking information, you're taking time and hassle off of their plate for them. That's really, really big sell. Uh, I've had people before who they did the same thing. No eye contact because they're so busy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. What can I do for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, basically those are the guys who say, hey, you know, I'd love to give you these bids. I want to bid on all your locations and take it completely off your plate. I want to be the one to handle all those locations 
one call if there's ever an issue or you get egged or something happens where you need emergency service, there's one call on all those locations. You have my cell phone number, you will get directly to me. Everything else I wanna take off your plate, I'm gonna handle all of the scheduling and making sure that it's done on time, that every location is awesome, and I'm gonna make sure that is. That sounds like, well, of course, like that's what we do anyway. It is, but I'm gonna tell them that because again, they're so busy, even if it's up here. Usually they actually are, they, they do load those ones up very much, but they want somebody to come and take some of their workload off of them because they have so much going on. So you're gonna be the guy that's selling them why they choose you, not the price, not because you're the cheapest, not that your windows are the cleanest, they could give two dumps how clean their windows are. You've been in there, there's fries on, on air ducts and you know just crud, you, the grossest places ever because they, they know their minimums and what they have to do and they know where the health inspectors have to give you kind of yes or no's. The other thing that's a big sell when we're talking health inspectors is to bring that up. I always say, hey, uh, and don't worry, if you ever have a health inspection, you let me know a couple days in advance and we'll make sure to get out here and get it done right before it so that you don't get any points off. That's like, people go, oh, oh, that, well, that's, that's nice, right? Because that's their job is to make sure that their health inspection goes well. It's their job to make sure their points are good. Something very interesting here in North Carolina, not Wisconsin, where I'm originally from, but in North Carolina, it is a sign posted that every single person in the store has to be able to see. So it's usually right in the entrance. If you go to a fast food place, it's literally on the window. It's a big uh, health department uh, score. You can see the score of every single person on there. Uh, it goes uh, just like school, 100% is best. So you see 96s, 98s, 99s. If you go to a Mexican restaurant, you're going to see, you know, 87. And you know that's a really good one <laughs> if you're not grossed out by restaurants. But um, so these guys are really, really trying to make sure that everything is uh, up to par. And if you haven't done uh, big franchise restaurants or that type of restaurant before, any restaurant really, uh, but the health inspection, it comes along, uh, that is huge. I will get calls from almost every single one of them because I put it out there. Now we charge for the service, of course. If they just had it done a week ago and they need it done again, they are completely happy because that health inspection is if they're hired or fired. That's what that means, right? So uh, we've done jobs uh, a few days, less than a week later, we'll get a call. Hey, uh, the health inspection is coming. All right, uh, what day are they coming? They're coming on Friday morning. Cool, we'll be there Thursday afternoon. Sweet, like that is it. We add extra services for that. They don't care, it's helping them out. And listen, if you can make yourself valuable, and this isn't anything, but if you make yourself valuable as a company, as a one go-to source, if you're the guy that you could have every question or anything answered, then they're gonna love you and they're gonna keep you around forever because they couldn't imagine hiring Joe Smith when he comes in and says, hey, I'd like to bid your windows. <sighs> yeah, hey, man, we're good. Uh, no, we're good. Because in his brain, he's like, man, I can call in Jersey for anything, anytime he makes sure it happens, man. It's just, it's a huge headache. They're more worried about getting that headache off than watching the budget because there's certain things there. Now, selling them on that point or working up to that point is a little bit tricky. But when you get a job like that, you keep them happy, they'll never drop you. Never. I mean, they just don't care. Usually. Now, there's always that rare case where they're so worried about the bottom dollar, the next guy comes in for a dollar less and you're out. We know that. But if you could take the burden off of their shoulders, they're going to love you and throw you everything. I'm telling you, um, I'll go back to my favorite, again, Arby's guy was just super cool. Always so busy. He was the guy who, I want to say his name was Jim. Jim. Something. Dan. Jim. 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 Now, mind you, I've been out of the game now for a little while. Uh, my company's back in Wisconsin, so I haven't had a chance to talk to the guy in a while. But he'd call. He was the guy that answered the phone when you got to him. He'd go, Jim, that's not how you answer the phone, Jim. I just want to let you know. I never said that. But he's so busy that he couldn't say, hey, this is Jim, or it's a great day at Arby's. This is Jim. How can he would, Jim, that's all he answered the phone. Jim. His jersey, uh, just giving you a call, making sure everything's uh, up to date and everything uh, is good. Yeah, yeah, everything is good. That's what it would be. I'd just call. Cool. Uh, let me know if we got any other questions. I would make my call super fast because, again, 
you are going to chameleon how somebody else is talking and how they're talking, their style. Because if they're talking that way, that's the way that they listen, right? If you talk to somebody and go, hey, it's a great day here at, uh, you know, uh, Jimmy Dean, this is Bobby, how can I help you today? You're going to talk a little bit slower. Hey, Bobby, it's Jersey calling from Window Cleaning Resource. Uh, just giving you a call to make sure everything's going good. How's things looking out there? Oh, man, they're good. Because if you talk and go, hey, it's uh, Jersey, how's things looking out there? Uh, they're uh, they're good, yeah. Cool. Anything else I can do for you? No. Uh, if you need anything, just let me know. Uh, yeah, because they're just a communication block, right? So when you are nice and busy, this is what happens. When you get a property manager from, say, Jim, I've gotten every single location uh, that he had. I've had other districts like, hey, uh, I'm going to have you call uh, Tim. Uh, Tim's a guy over on the other district. You guys work over there? Yeah, we do. Okay, I'm going to have you call him. He's got all those ones there. He just needs a guy. Let him know uh, that I sent you. I call him up. Hey, uh, Jim told me to give you a call. We've been doing a lot of work for him lately. Uh, he told me to give you a call and I got some problems to handle for you. Oh, yeah, good, man. Awesome that you call. You got to give me a bid or are we good? No, I know your locations are going to be comparable to the other location. I'm going to look them over. If there's any changes, I'll let you know. Otherwise, we're going to start this week. Sweet. Thanks a lot, man. That's it. Like, boom, I just picked up four new locations because of the other guy. Like, they're passing their name on. They all want those things. They're all working very, you know, smooth together. But the other thing is, is that every single service that he ever wanted, he would call me first. Hey, uh, you guys do snow removal? Yeah, we sure do. Yeah, I need all those lots done. Uh, throw me a price. Uh, actually, you know what I'll do on the on the snow? This is what he did. He said, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to email you over the other invoices. Just let me know how close you can get to those guys. I got their invoices from last year. Looked at it, went, yeah, no problem, man. I'll match that without uh, without a hassle. Cool, man. It's yours. That was it. I, I, I picked up uh, six snow accounts that way, parking lots, commercial parking lots. Like, these are, these are projects that... Um, are just handed to you because of how you dealt with it. They know that if they can put something else on your plate, it takes it off of theirs. And this is really where the focus comes in from. Uh, we've picked up uh, pressure washing, drive-through pressure washing, concrete. We've picked up dumpsters. We've uh, we've actually picked up dumpsters with a guy that uh, we would get out there the day of the dumpster. Uh, they would move it and set it back down in the parking lot. We would clean the dumpster pad, slide the dumpster back in. I mean, we were... When you get property managers, like we've had a ton of them like that, that have just been like, hey, uh, I got the uh, concrete out in front. I want to get that done on a monthly basis too. Oh, sweet. You want, you know, we'll look at it. And I'll just, just, you know, tell me the price and uh, I'll give you the okay. Like it's just, it when they can completely trust you, it's, it's a huge thing in this world. So that's really where you're going. Back to everything. So if you go into a place and they say, hey, no, sorry, corporate takes care of it. Oh, hey, not a problem. Uh, what is uh, the number for the corporate office? Oh, let me find that. Okay, great. I'm not ever going to be imposed because that's their job. They need to give me that. If it's not there, then usually uh, even the facilities in the very beginning of the, says this building is, you know, it'll be property company or whatever. But usually in those, they handle it in-house uh, unless they're running through an NSP. Uh, but I'm going to get corporate number and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to call them up and I'm going to say, hey, um, I, uh, you know, um, I went to your location and I'm just calling to find out who the head of facilities is or who the person in charge of the property maintenance is. Oh, well, that's Danny over here. We're going to get passed through. So I'm going to go through the steps. Now, mind you, it is a lot of work to kind of get this all out, but I'm telling you, it's so worth it. But now if I need to talk to the head of facilities or I need to talk to a facility manager or somebody who's in charge of all that, I'm going to, I'm going to give them my name. I'm going to get their email and name right away. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to email you over everything and I'm going to follow up. Every couple of days, I'm going to follow up with them. Make sure that he knows, uh, yeah, yeah, not re not, uh, not really uh, looking to have anything switch right now. Hey, not a problem. Let me send you my information anyway so you have it on file. That's the end of a conversation for them, so they always will give you, oh, yeah, yeah, just uh, shoot it over to uh, Dave at Arby's.com. Okay, Dave, thanks. Guess what? I'm going to send it over to Dave. Then in a week, I'm going to text him, hey, uh, Dave, I know you were uh, not looking to go forward, but did you get a chance to look at everything? They're probably going to ignore that. I'm going to send another one two days later. Like Follow-up is key. These guys are so busy that you need to follow up. So follow up with them, email them, get all the information, and continue to go. Now that's when somebody says we're corporate. When they say 
corporate handles that. That just means there's somebody somewhere that handles that. You got to find out who that is. It's going to be facility maintenance probably or something along those lines. Does some research, go through the gatekeepers, work your way up. Um, if anybody says, oh, can I ask who's calling or what's this regarding? I always say, yeah, hey, it's Jersey. Uh, we're doing the uh, bid over there on the project for some uh, maintenance and I just needed to get some uh, more information from them. Something along those lines where I'm not saying, I'm calling to find out if he's interested. I'm not going to say that. How I'm wording it is we're sending in, we're giving them the, the bid on the window cleaning there uh, at that location. And uh, I just uh, wanted to double check his email or whatever, however I'm wording it. Because I want to get through the gatekeeper. That's the point of all of this, right? Now, getting all of the locations, there's one word of advice that I would give you that if you are doing these type of jobs, you need to do is not blanketing because I've been to, uh, what the heck was the store? Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. It was a furniture store. I can't remember the name. But anyway, so we got a bid for 20 something of them and they wanted a price for all of them. And uh, I always check the stores, always. I do Google searches and if anything's crazy, then I'm going to go and drive there. Uh, and that was exactly what it was, is they wanted a blanket statement on these things. And uh, they were um, not furniture stores, they were like rental places. And some of them were standard, right? Okay, I can see it, you know, you got uh, 36 panes in the front, two doors. That's where the next one, you got about 40 panes, two doors. Pretty standard, right? I could figure that out. And then there was other locations where there were these glass interior dormers that they had to kind of make the wow factor in some of these plazas. Hugely different. I'm talking 120 something windows, like hugely different. So blankets are very hard when you do that. Uh, what they do is that they want you to kind of give them a price so they know for budgeting reasons, but that part's really, really hard. The other thing is if you get into a project like that, especially corporate, and you can't do the work because you know you didn't bid enough and you're losing your butt on it, they're going to drop you because the work isn't getting done to how they need it to get done. They're going to find somebody else. So make sure to check all of the locations when you're bidding it, uh, especially in a multiple location one. Like I said, the most that I've done is a Walgreens. It was 101 locations, and it was tricky because it was pressure washing and window cleaning, and uh, we just lumped them in. Like we looked, okay, this one's like that. This one's like that. This is a type one. This is a type one. This is a type three. This is a type two, and then we kind of lumped them in the pricing. Uh, very, very tricky. It was, you know, multiple locations like that. You're talking drive time also. When you're driving more than 40 minutes out of your range, you're not by any of your routes, you have to keep that in mind. Because yes, it will help you sell more routes, but you have to pick up all of the locations to get any of the locations. That's where subcontracting comes into play too. But anyway, that's for another show. Go watch the subcontracting show. That'll get you through. Let's show you everything on that. Um, but price is big on these ones to really get in the door if you can't sell them on the fact of who you are so keep that in mind uh, checking your locations really really does help that and remember the last kind of word of advice if you're doing this kind of stuff is that you need to make sure to let them know that you're gonna take all of that worry off their plate and you're the guy you're gonna handle it it's just one less thing that they have to do. They're going to love that. I'm telling you, it's a huge selling point. So make sure to go and do that. If you're selling route, go out there and just uh, sell the heck out of it. And don't be scared of the franchise locations. Again, if you're listening, jump on YouTube. Tell me your favorite franchise location that you do. And uh, tell me why. I want to see. I want to hear. Um, but anyway, thanks again to Steven uh, for telling us what's up. Giving us an idea. If you have an idea... Send it to me, jersey at windowcleaner.com. Let's talk about what you want to talk about. Tell me some ideas. I love it. Um, you know, you guys send them in all the stinking time. It's really, really awesome. I really appreciate it. So thank you for that. If you want to be one of the elite, one of the cool kids, and buy your supplies through me, I'm going to give you my number again. It's 862 312 2026. That is my cell. Call me or text me. Put it all in your cart, text me it's in your cart, whatever you want to do. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I want to be your rep for everything. And if you are uh, putting an order in through me, you can't do this on the site, you got to do it through me. But this week's um, uh, phrase, if you will, for 5% off 
is We Got the Meat. Yes, you have to tell me We Got the Meat because it's Arby's. We're talked about Arby's. Uh, tell me that and you get 5% off your order when I put it in. So please definitely do that. Uh, again, 862-312-2026. The thanks to everybody who went to the show. It was absolutely amazing. I'm still tired from it, if you can't tell. Uh, but uh, thank you guys for going. hope you had a blast. hope you enjoyed Branson. We're going to the, the uh, Atlanta uh, next year. It's going to be later in the month also. So get your tickets now. Don't wait. By the way, we always have people at the end who buy tickets the day of. And it just like, oh. If you would have just pre-planned, you would have saved so much, hundreds, hundreds, thousand dollars. Anyway, go do that. Uh, go out there. Give me a call. Please let me put orders in for you. I'm begging of you. Tell me what I can buy that is name brand also when you do. And uh, yeah, go out there and just be epic. 